MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Last week on My Fantasy Podcast. That's what we'll do. That's the rundown. No rundown really next week. It's going to be all fantasy football on our fantasy, fantasy football draft. That, I mean, that's it. We'll see where you guys can probably send us feedback the next day as to how low Orlando's going to be in the rankings. <laughs> yeah, look at it as a comedy show next week for Orlando's draft. So, I mean, that's why you'll want to tune in. And I think that's what we'll do on the podcast the following week, guys, is we'll do a draft recap, and we want your feedback as much as possible. Send as many comments or whatever you want. How did we all do? Rank us and just talk about how dumb we were, how smart we were, who had the steals of the draft, who you think might end up being champion based on the rosters. We're mixing the MyFantasySportsTalk.com uh, writers along with the fans, so it's going to be uh, very entertaining as well uh, next week. So do do not miss that 7.30 Eastern Time My Fantasy Podcast, our live MyFantasySportsTalk.com fantasy draft. And that's all we're going to do. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us. My Fantasy Podcast, a special edition of My Fantasy Podcast. Tonight, it's August 23rd, a date we've been talking about for a long time. It's our live MFST, My Fantasy Sports Talk Fantasy Draft, our second season. The defending champ right here. Hey, Dan, check this out. I got my Legends are Born. You can't see the whole thing. I'm not going to stand up, but Legends are Born in May Michael Jordan shirt on tonight. Uh, and just in case everybody at home was wondering, yes, I was born in May. 31st day, but uh, I was born in May. I thought you were saying you wanted to draft in May. <laughs> no. Oh, no well. You know better than that. No, that would be a disaster. You, you would have taken Zeke third overall because you Brandon does have the third pick in our draft, and if we did draft back in May, Zeke would have probably been your choice, and you would have been tough out of luck there. Here's the thing. The folks that are drafting, in my, in my opinion, the folks that are drafting third overall in this draft have the one of the hardest choices to make. Not that you're going to screw it up either way. I mean, not badly, because the thing is, uh, to me, you, I'm not even giving too much away. Because who, who drafts number one? Uh, was it uh, Dennis somebody? Dennis Durso, a fan of the show and uh, in sight, has joined us in our league, and he's got the first pick. So if you're watching, Dennis, I'm just uh, hoping that you or whoever drafts second screws this up somehow and helps me out. But I don't know what I'm going to do, Dan. We were talking about it just a second ago. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's a hard decision here. Uh, so I'm just going to have to see how the first two picks plays out. But I draft third. Dan drafts eight in the draft, which is going to start here. We're about three minutes away from the live draft here on MyFantasySportsTalk.com. And, of course, we don't have the interface up for you to see live on the screen, but we're going to let you know what's going on pick by pick by pick. Promise you that. Uh, Dan drafts eight. And then our man is back, uh, Orlando Torres from San Antonio. Where are you slotted, dog? Uh, 13th, way 13th. at the end. <laughs> So that's not bad. I did a mock draft earlier, and I was 13th. So it comes back around, usually get two back-to-back picks. And I do like that because I set it up. And, and you're usually, you're usually probably going to get who you think you can get at that point, or at least one of them for sure. Yeah, more than likely. And uh, the thing I've been doing a lot with uh, the 13th pick is that, you know, sometimes you have to, to reach. I'm not saying reach far, but being at that back end of that draft and then coming around late in the third, it's kind of, you know, it's more than likely the guy you're thinking about next won't be there. So it's and you need to make up for probably not getting that elite player right up the top, one of those top four or five picks. You need exactly. To, you need to try to make up for that somehow, but maybe pop a surprise. So 
Uh, but yeah, we'll have more writers come on the uh, on the podcast as the draft goes on. We're all drafting. We're all on the on the site, the ESPN my um, my fantasy sports talk podcast draft board right now. So we're just kind of waiting here, um, just under two minutes to go until we get this thing started out. So, um, you know, have are you are you guys done a lot of mock drafts, Dan? You, you are you confident in, in what you're going to do here? What you think you can do? You, you got it all lined out, or what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, I I'm extremely confident tonight. I think you guys are going to be able to witness some greatness and uh, just some amazing <laughs> drafting abilities. And you might be shocked at some of the picks uh, that I make, but c- come week 16 of the NFL season, you'll understand why those picks are being made. Like that? Yeah, you got a lot to prove. Okay, real quickly, our fantasy, real quickly, our fantasy baseball league, Dan. Uh, so I'm losing right now. If I lose, I'm not out of the playoffs, right? Have you looked at it? I mean, I'm still gonna make the playoffs, right? So last week, if I lose, somehow, uh, I haven't, I haven't looked at it for you. I'm not. It's gonna uh, drop it down. That's gonna drop me down to like fourth place. So I'm just hoping there's no ball, scenario. Fourth place you get in, so so you're you're safe there. Top four. I didn't want to play. I didn't want to play you in the semifinals. I wanted to play you in the championship again. Yeah, well, how about you win? And then that'll be an easy case scenario right there. I'll try. I'll try. I, my team has been doing good, but I uh, haven't done well the first two uh, days of this week. So uh, we'll see where that goes. But that's the next big fantasy thing for us here at MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Our Fantasy League Baseball playoffs will be starting up next week. Um. So here we go, guys, trying to see. I think we got everyone in the board here. We're 10 seconds away from starting this thing off, and ah, I'm excited and nervous. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, you guys, uh, you guys yeah. might have to carry the show to some t- today, too, because I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, got my, I got my hot board of 20 players here, and I'm going to be s- switching in and out. And we have our first pick, David Johnson. No surprise there. Yep, 90 seconds That's the guy per pick. And so we would assume, I guess, Levy and Bell's about to come off the board, uh, and that's going to leave Brandon in a tough scenario. You don't know that. You don't know that. Why are you giving tips here? Which wide receiver that's will Brandon take? Bell. They'll have his pick of the crop. It's Levy on Bell here. So the top two picks are Levy on Bell, David Johnson. Uh, David Johnson, number one, Levy on Bell, number two. No big surprise here. Yeah, no so. Big surprise. Uh, guys, what should I do? Let me take a quick poll. Not to prolong this, but let me take a quick poll. Orlando, what pick? Who should I pick now? Uh, you should go with the man. Quickly, quickly. Oh. Dan, who should All I? All right. Pick? Well, Orlando's gonna make you just auto draft it. <laughs> yeah. I I told you before the show, Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans is gonna be the pick. And I said Mike Evans. Mike Evans is the pick number three overall. Boom. I like that. Mike Evans, he's, some people you might see he's the first wide receiver off the board, but uh, the numbers that he consistently puts up, he doesn't have the injury risks like a couple of the other guys, ODB. Yeah, well, I was about to say, what happened with you and Odell? I thought that was your guy. Here's my explanation for picking Mike Evans. I think Mike Evans is going to have a beast of a year, as a lot a lot of the Tampa Bay Bucks will. Antonio Brown, I think this streak is coming to an end. I'm not buying him being third fantasy value player overall anymore. Odell Beckham, I've had my fill with Eli and Odell. Julio, I'm scared about his injury risk. That's why I went with Mike Evans. I'm not reaching for LaShawn McCoy at three or Devontae Freeman or Melvin Gordon, the other running backs at three. So that was my reasoning, and I just think Mike Evans is – uh, I think Mike Evans could be the top fantasy producing wide receiver this year. He's number two in my book. I'm not going to say on air right this second who my number one is, although I've said it in previous episodes, because that's who I hope to target at eighth overall. So um, I like that pick, and I just hope my number one receiver uh, lasts until number eight. So this next pick is uh, Jim Kiblin, another fan of the site, picking fourth. And taking his sweet time down to 15. Hope Jim's with us. Hey, you got 10 seconds here. This is intriguing. It's probably got to be Antonio Brown. If it does fall to an auto pick, it will be Antonio Brown for overall. Oh, come on, Jim. And it was Antonio Brown. So our man Casey Birch is up next here. Casey Birch, a new writer to the site who came on in the last month or so, he actually put out a great piece today, uh, Top 10 Sleepers and Bargains, uh, on the site, myfantasysportstalk.com. So while he's picking, 
Uh, shout out to him. Check out his piece. It's doing very well on the site today. Uh, and he's got a lot of uh, in-depth analysis with each of his picks. Um, so we'll see what he goes here. Obviously, you're not going to draft a sleeper in the first round. Um, but it'll be uh, interesting to see later in the draft how many of those players that he he's, he likes in that top ten who he's going to target. And it's all come down to this, right, Dan? So many fantasy articles. Whoa. And, man, Casey did reach. Whoa. Casey reached for Whoa. a running back, Devontae Freeman. Oh, that's, that's crazy. He's uh, he actually wasn't even in my top ten uh, when I brought out my rankings this year. So that was kind of that's kind of a shock to me. But I like it. Uh, it's, not, it uh, it's not bad. There's no more Tim Hightower in that backfield. Someone's got to run the ball. And so we see the trend of running backs going here. Lashawn goes sixth. Maybe at the when it all said and done, I screwed up. Maybe I should have taken that elite run, one of those elite running backs. But I don't know. Uh, Odell is seven. Odell. Wow. Now we're picking up the pace, and now it's our own Dan Shawks pick, pick number eight. And, and, and I know exactly where I'm going. This guy's on the board, and I've wanted him the whole time. Mr. Michael Thomas of the Saints. He's my number one receiver uh, entering the season. And I'm doing that leaving Julio on the board. Uh, I guess you can say Jordy, uh, but Julio Matt, goes right after. And Yep, Matt, Matt Aguirre, um, the uh, uh, Talking Smack podcast. The Shout People's out. Podcast, yeah. yeah, yeah. People, sorry, People's Podcast. Jordy goes 10. Our man Thomas Take on the clock. He uh, he likes to talk smack like the, the best of us, um, but can he back it up? That's the big question. It's highly debatable. You see he's on the clock. He oh. took Zeke. Took Zeke. Uh, I think that was a little high, but if you if you want them, you want them. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have waited until the back end coming around uh, if, in his position. Um, but with some of the names that are jumping off the board that Benjamin I didn't Green expect to go. Yeah, a lot of my mocks, uh, Ezekiel was going to be there around pick 20 or so. And Orlando sneaks in Jordan Howard without saying anything. I do apologize. <laughs> I, I didn't want him to cut no one out. Yeah, I took Jordan Howard. Uh, looking at the wide receivers, uh, I feel like, I mean, I like what's on the board, but a, a guy like Jordan Howard, he can't pass him up, especially late. There's a DDT now on the board. Dylan Davis, Gerard. Oh, we'll try to get him in here after he makes his pick. Because he's about to pick twice in a row, so we'll see what he. He's in a good situation, Dan. He's not in a bad situation. He didn't like this pick, but I yeah. I would have preferred this pick over any other pick, to be honest with you. Yeah. He's the yeah. only person here taken in the top fifteen. You get two top yeah. fifteen draft picks. It's not bad. It's not, it's bad. Bad. It's not bad. So let's see the one two combo he's going to throw at us. <clears throat> he's taking a sweet time. Probably doesn't know what the heck he's doing right now. He's getting all scared. He's listening to us. <laughs> watching and now the clock is ticking down and he's like oh no who do i go for he's uh, i can imagine a ddt melvin, free he, he got melvin gordon so there's his running back let's see what he does here some other most notable names on the board uh next talents would be ty hilton demarco murray jay ajay doug baldwin des bryant then leonard fournette todd Gurley, amari cooper uh just some of the i'm guys. expecting des to go to orlando's next pick i mean a fellow cowboys fan so I don't expect uh, Dez to be available. Does Orlando have that much uh, faith in Dak Prescott? Oh, I actually seen was Zeke gone. I mean, they. I, I do imagine they're kind of kind of force feed Dez, uh, just somewhat. Well, don't I mean, they do need some pass catchers in that though? Uh, and Dez Bryant. Oh, and Dez Bryant. DDT is listening. There goes your man. Yeah, Dez Bryant. So he got yeah. his really good running back and his really good receiver. All right, so right here, let's see what I go ahead and do here. This is a bit of a reach, but you know what? I stuck, I stuck by this guy. I went in and took Brandon, Brandon Cooks. Um, just in the Patriots offense, high fly. I could have went with another running back, but um, again, uh, this is a guy I would like to take later, but he's definitely not going to be there when I come back around in the third round. And, and, and to our audience, this is why Orlando has earned the reputation last place, Lando. Wait, wait, wait. And, a combo with Jordan Howard and Brandon Cooks is going to uh, – I'm personally – I, I, I'm not high on Jordan or uh, Brandon Cooks at all this year. I like Jordan Howard. I'm okay with that. Uh, Brandon Cooks – I actually have Edelman ranked ahead of Cooks this year. I just think he's going to end That's up in ridiculous. a you know, 
like we are in, I like uh, I like Edelman's chances a little bit better. I would like and to see you. JGI off the board now, and mm-hmm. Thomas Take back on the clock. It was Jeremy O'Neill that took JGI. So, Mr. Thomas Take is up. I'm sure he knows exactly what he wants to do. He took Ezekiel Elliott first. Leonard Fournette. Another guy, obviously, in a 14-man league like we're in, he's going to be going in the second round. I think it's a little bit early. Uh, it's a top-20 pick for Leonard Fournette. There's a, there's a couple backs out there that I like that I like more. Um, that I would have taken ahead of him uh, with Matt Aguilar on the uh, on the block. I'm not going to say. Oh, Marco Murray. He took the Marco Murray, and that leaves me available to draft my running back, Todd, Todd Gurley. Gurley. There you go. Looks like Team Six was that Jim. Yeah, Jim Kiblin is on auto pick, so that'll be real quick. Um, picking now, it's Malachi. And I, I like that Todd Gurley, uh, Todd Gurley pick. I know the Rams' offense with Jared Goff was pretty dismal last year, but I expect a bounce back season uh, from Todd Gurley this year. And he's basically going to be their entire offense. Uh, and them adding him into the passing game like they've done in the uh, in training camp and preseason, I like uh, I like his opportunities in this half point PPR league that we're in. Malachi has stacked himself with Odell Beckham Jr. and Amari Cooper. It's a it's a solid duo when you when you have Amari Cooper as a wide receiver too. I actually don't like him as as a wide receiver one in most formats, um, but he getting him as a wide receiver two. It'll be interesting to see how he shapes his roster later on. Um, but that's a nice one two punch right off the bat. And New Breeds, you're coming up, so you finally get uh, two pretty two get another pick. Closely, Doug Baldwin Sorry. off the boards. So. We're seeing just a mix of running backs and wide receivers. Colby, really, honestly, that doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm okay with that. Casey Birch is up. So, Lamar Miller, there goes a running back, and then Demarius Thomas. So, that leaves me with a little quandary. A little quandary. I like that Demarius Thomas pick. I know it's uh, Jim who's not actually with us, but it does look like he – preset his rankings because he was not the next person off the board. Um, I, I actually like Demarius Thomas. He, you look at that quarterback situation, and he he's always finds himself to consistently have 1,000-yard campaigns. He's actually had five years straight, um, even with those quarterbacks that he's had. So I like that pick a lot. Guys, I got to get that running back. Crowell. He's a top 10 back in my eyes. I like that pick. Let's see. Let's hope. I had to get that back. Had to reach for somebody. This next pick it may be even more of a reach here, depending on what happens. Uh, Terrell Pryor, the former Brown. And currently back to the top. Dennis Durso, pick Gronk. I told you guys last week I'm done with Gronk. So I'm not that doesn't. That's why I passed him over. He'll probably have a, a great year though. So. Uh, Dennis gets to go again. He's got that luxury. So we are now starting top around oh. round three. Um, and Brandon, you're on you're on deck right now. So you have running back, wide receiver. The question is, where are you going to go? You can answer us. Tell us. He's thinking about you. You're so in. He's so champ is in champ mode right now. He's not even paying attention to the podcast. He's oh, ready for this pick. I'm going with what I've been doing in my mock drafts. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's going to be uh it's going to come with some dismays here. So who's on the board that new breed will shock us with? Eddie Lacy. Oh, is this an Eddie Lacy pick? Oh. pick right here? Oh my god! Uh, I hope it is. Dan, Dan, what are you? Lacy. Are you trying? Are you trying to get him later, Orlando? No, 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 no. <laughs> he could, he could have him. Okay, so Keenan Allen goes thirty. Here we go, guys. You ready? 
Do it. My pick was? Elshon Jeffrey. He's eh. Meh to me. Carlos Hyde quickly goes next. Now it's going to be like a long Carlos time Hyde. before I get to pick again. So, guys, I'm sitting with Mike Evans, Alshon Jeffrey, and Isaiah Crowell. Thoughts? Uh, I, I'm not a huge Jeffrey fan this year, um, but I do like your other two picks. I think they are solid. What's the problem with Jeffrey? Going to a new team? Really, a health, health is the biggest thing. He, he hasn't proven to stay healthy since, I believe, it was like his – Second year in the league, he missed his whole rookie season, so he just he just can't stay healthy. So he's got to prove that to me, for me to take him in the top three rounds. Yeah, no, just besides his health, the, the talents there, um, and whatever's left in Philly, I mean, you don't really take for uh, you don't really feel threatened by um, what other receivers are there compared to um, Jeffrey. And I think Carson Carson Wentz can sling the ball and will only get better. Um. Whoa, Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin. <sighs> so mm. I, there's two picks, two picks until I pick, and there, there's a guy on the board that I am shocked is still on the board, and uh, I'm hoping he falls to me. That's that's my thought process right now. Because if he doesn't, I'm not really sure where I'm going to go. And that Kelvin, Kelvin Benjamin, Benjamin. Pick, that was a, that was a little questionable, I think. Yeah. What about, Carlos Hyde? what about Carlos Hyde this year, Dan? He always has one good game week one. Um, and the guy I wanted, DeAndre Hopkins, oh, is off the board. There goes another guy that was on my hot list, Christian McCaffrey. So, Christian McCaffrey was 35th, DeAndre Hopkins 34th, Kelvin Benjamin 33rd. And Romo the dog, a.k.a. Dan Shalk, is in a little bit of scramble mode now. Who's his backup? He wanted DeAndre. Let's see who he's going to add to Todd Gurley and Michael Thomas. He's got a really good uh, back, really good receiver. What's going to tie it all together with this third pick from Dan Shaw? Yeah, this is a this is a tough one. I'm not liking my my spots where I'm at, where I'm at right now. So it's it's a pick 'em right now. And who am I going to select with 30 seconds left on the clock? Is the question. I think the best at his position is on the board there, Dan. And um, that's all I'll say. Well, there's actually two situations like that. Within the next yeah. 10 projected picks, two of the guys are the best at their position. And I went to Vontae Adams. Adams. Okay, okay. Ooh, Orlando, what do you think about that one? I mean, hey, I talked to him before. Um, I think he, if anything, he's on. He's, he's coming up. Um, Jordy Nelson, I think, is on a bit of a decline. What was he's it? Still there goes Aaron Rodgers. So Golden Tate and then Aaron Rodgers. Um, Dan, what was Devonte Adams' overall rank there? If you remember, uh, overall rank was forty-five. Okay, so you didn't stretch too too far. So the top uh, the quarterback of the class, Aaron Rodgers, goes thirty-eight overall. That's just he's just one of those guys. He's just one of those guys. If you really want to go ahead and pick the quarterback, you need to go ahead and probably get him in the first four rounds. There goes Tom Brady. So the dominoes are falling. In my opinion, there's only really one more elite quarterback that you must have early on on this board. Rodgers and Brady go back to back. Well, Aaron Rodgers wasn't in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady was, so that leaves one more quarterback that was. Drew Brees years ago was. Dalvin Cook (laughs) goes 40th. And Orlando is on the clock. Now I'm facing some pressure because that's that's exactly the man that I was targeting. Sorry, you got two of the next four picks. Let's take a look at Orlando's roster as of now. He's got Jordan Howard, of course, and then Brandon Cooks. Who's he going to add with that? (laughs) 
Nick, come so on. Let's go ahead and take a look at my options. Your boy Woodhead's out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take Crabtree here. Uh, a little iffy about that pick, but um, I do like what he's been able to do, and he's been DDT. outperforming Cooper as well. DDT oh, took that other guy. I was talking about best in his class, Dan Jordan Reed. That's not a bad pick. Forty-two. Now he gets. I don't even have him in the top four. He may be my fifth. I don't even. I, there's tight ends on the board that I would take over Jordan Reed. So okay. Not a huge fan. <laughs> okay. But again, he has the luxury of going back to back. I'd take Greg Olson. No, he didn't fall for that. Larry Fitzgerald, the ageless wonder. It'll be interesting to see his role in that Arizona offense. Um, I don't think he's going to be targeted as often as he was last year. Um, I think his role is going to be diminished a little bit, uh, but we'll see. Is that his second receiver? On his team, DDT. It might have been. It is. Yes, he has. He has, does have uh, that. He does, yeah, he took that. Soccer superstar. Not a bad team. I know Dan's not uh, high on Jordan Reed, but I'm pretty high on him. Yeah, that's a pretty stacked team so far. All right, so I went ahead and took Montgomery. Another, and if you pick, but then again, it's he's a featured in a high scoring offense, so I do like that upside with Ty Montgomery. And Blau Powell quickly came off the board as well as Julian Edelman. We're now at pick 47 in the fifth round. Two picks away from me. I have a guy that I am targeting. I would, uh, I've gotten him in multiple drafts uh, so far leading up to this date, so I hope to I hope to pull him off in two picks from now. 49th overall. Sammy Watkins. Dear Jesus, no. Travis Kelsey goes off the board. <laughs> Not Sammy saying, Watkins, I, I, that's I, an Orlando. Wait, wait, wait. I have nothing against Sammy, but I did mention I would not take him this early. I've mentioned that several times. People try to assume I'd take him in my first round. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's about the 10th. So, wait, Orlando just said he would take Sammy Watkins in the first round? We oh. all heard that, right? <laughs> okay. One more pick until, uh, until the guy. Let's see if uh, – who is before me? Uh, Matt Aguar. I, I guarantee y'all that Sammy Watkins will not make it back around to, to Orlando. Not not saying that I'm because because of me. I'm just saying I guarantee you he's not. Yeah, gonna well, I mean there are a lot of picks, and Thomas Take has two of them, and he's a uh, he's a, uh, a oh, Mark okay. Ingram. <clears throat> Mark Ingram. And I am selecting Joe Mixon. Uh, from Cincinnati, I love his upside. I think he, by week four, he's going to be that lead back. I don't think there's going to be much of a committee um, towards the end of the year. Uh, so I just got to ride it out for those first few weeks. But I think he's a solid RB2 uh, in a 14-man league. Yeah, you can't argue that in a 14-man league. Brandon, are you going to argue it? No. No. The champ is plotting his next move. So I'm four, four, four picks away from, from Brandon's slot. Um, and this is – we're going to be – we're finishing round four, entering round five. I already know who I want to target in my next pick, and it's 13 picks away, and I hope he lasts to me. So Orlando, take – make. oh, I have a pick before Orlando. I was going to say make sure you fill one of those up with Sammy Watkins, but that's not going to be happening. And not gonna be happening. So you can have one if you want. Go ahead and take them. No, no. CJ Anderson off the board after I selected Mixon by Malachi. Malachi's team name is the American Slum Dogs. For those out there wondering what Malachi is thinking team name wise. <laughs> and uh Orlando, have you made a team name yet? Are you, are you? I have not made a team, no, but I'm waiting this? to find a Wait, I'm waiting to finalize my players, okay? I need to be creative. Obviously, Zeke's not in way, so rest in peace. Zeke can destroy Zeke virus. I I will find a, something else to go with. I mean, I could go with too many cooks in the kitchen. I got Brandon Cooks. I have a crab tree. I'm pretty sure I could come up with something over there. Let's see who else falls to me. You can, you can be overdrafted cooker because <laughs> oh, you overdrafted Brandon Cooks. 
uh, in a fourteen uh, team, I don't know, but he was over <laughs> over drafted. I mean, Drew, Drew Brees, Tyree Kill off the board. Now we are on New Breed. Where's his head at? What's really he gonna cute. think? Is he gonna shock us? Is this where Eddie Lacy comes off the board? Oh, this is your chance to get There's, it. See, for those watching on video right now, when it pans to Brandon, he's got this devious look on his face when I mentioned Eddie Lacy. So uh, I don't know. That's if that's that's he's not even on my board. I deleted him. I deleted Eddie Lacy completely off ESPN for me. So he, I don't even see where he's ranked. It's got to be pretty low. But we know. Okay, guys, this is outside of anything I've done on mocks this far, thus far. And deep breath before you hit draft player. <laughs> Look at new reads. You haven't just like, Greg Olson. Tight end. Hey, tight ends are going off. You know they're they're being drafted now. So you're not you're at all, not draft. at all what I wanted to do. But I've got my next player lined up here in another three, four picks uh, that I think will be available. Who is it? <laughs> so right now, New Breeds roster. Uh, Crowell is your lone running back. You got Evans, Jeffrey, and Olson. Hmm. So I would assume. And here's the game. <laughs> and Dan, um, who my next pick will be. I I think I know who it is, and I think it's who I want to target. Or at least I'm just worried that it's the guy I want to target. I, I doubt so we'll it. Uh, based on what you have said. Well, if he's um, a Buffalo Bill, you know he will not be a guy I target. It's Adrian Peterson. No. Oh, dear. Uh, no. Allen That's Robinson bad. goes off the board. And the thing with Blake Bortles now, that's why it scares me away from all Jacksonville receivers oh, right now. I mean, Blake Bortles is a, is a day away from being cut. Maybe that's the best yeah. thing for Jacksonville. So three picks so. away. Let's see here. Uh, Jarvis Landry. That's Dennis Durso, our fan. Picks Martavis Bryant. So Just my chances are looking served. better. My chances are looking better. One away. All right, so I got, hope I got some guys targeted. Hope I hope these guys are here. Tell me who they are, and I'll tell you if they're going to be there. Uh, one of them I had, you've mentioned in a podcast before. So Adam, you, there's a chance you might take them. You got to pick before me. Uh, we, I believe we've talked hundreds of players leading up to our fantasy draft. That's the type of coverage you've gotten on the podcast. So let's just not narrow it down, Orlando. It's Darren Copage who is up next, guys. He took Le'Veon first, and he's got Terrell Pryor, Keenan Allen, and Allen Robinson. So what could he yeah. possibly do here? Let's see, Allen, uh, yeah. He's got 35 seconds. We're at pick um, 58 into the fifth round. Needs a quarterback. Uh, we got tight end, defense, uh, another running back. Uh, he can do anything right now. Three receivers, though. Receiver heavy. Does he have a running back, did you say? Le'Veon Bill. Oh, my God. Spencer Ware. Dennis. 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 Okay, guys. No, Darren. Darren. Wait, wait, wait. So how do you feel about that pick, New Reeds? Did you not like it? You wanted Spencer that Ware. Guy. That was my guy. That was my guy. Interesting. That was That's my guy. That was my guy. New Breeds. Was, but but here's the thing. Was it your guy? Yeah, it was my guy. I, was, I took him every mock draft. <clears throat> I, I enjoy uh, having this podcast while we're doing the draft because I can see the pain that Newbury just experienced. And as a person who came in second place to him last year, I enjoyed that. That that flash of three seconds of Newbury reacting. That uh, One freaking pig. Tugged at the heartstrings there. So, I'm, I'm scrapping it. I'm scrapping it, guys. Um, here we go. Natty Ice. Uh, Dennis, Darren, D Dennis, uh, whoever. <laughs> it was Darren. <laughs> God, dog. I hate when that happens. One pick. I wanted Spencer Ware, man. Great pickup. Great pickup. It was Darren. Darren Coppage. Son of a Coppage. 
so one pick until me, and I'm going to explain. Well, with my pick, I think I'm going to tell you how I felt about your last pick. Who? Who? You. <laughs> I already know what you think about my last pick. Uh, it was a panic pick, Dan. No, no, man. No, you'll see. You'll know what I'm talking about. Once, uh, who is this, Matt? Matt again, he's on, or Malachi. He's probably listening. He's n- trying to figure out who I want. He's going to select him here. There's some paranoia on the podcast today. I'll just say that because yeah. I don't know if those guys are are watching, so I if can't give out too much info. I took a quarterback in the fifth round. I panicked a little bit, Dan. I panicked a little bit. But there was only three elite quarterbacks to me, in my opinion. And uh, What I was talking about was the guy that I just oh, – Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Very high on him, and I actually think he's going to outperform Spencer Ware by a lot and will be the starting back come midseason. So uh, you should be thanking Darren right now, New Breeds, because Spencer Ware is a <laughs> bust. Okay, we'll see. So you like Matty Ice over Spencer Ware? Oh, yeah. yeah. You could have picked uh, – well, I was going to say Sammy Watkins, but that's just not true. So my guy Andy Dalton, I knew I could have had – I could probably get him in round 12 or 13. That that was my backup plan, but I panicked. I panicked and got what I think is going to be an elite producing quarterback. Do you know, New Breeds, I, in every mock draft I have basically done, in live draft, Andy Dalton has gone undrafted. Undrafted, not even being selected. So you could have probably gotten him at the end. Last round, if you wanted to, they just filled up your team with ridiculous depth. That's true, but I, I do think there's a difference in production between Matty Ice and even the best Andy Dalton is going to be this year. I'm, I'm high on Andy Dalton. I said top ten fantasy quarterback, uh, no, probably top five or six. When yeah, I was sure. did you have him at four? I think you had him four on the bottom. around there, around there. Hmm. Yep. We'll see. We'll see. I told you I didn't – man, I didn't feel good about that third pick. It set me into a weird rotation is what happened here. So, I anyway. think we can uh, we can thank our fans, especially Darren Coppage there, because he yeah. completely got in your head. Our yes, fans are getting in the champ's head. Yes, he did. Brandon Marshall and then Eddie Lacy, 66. Oh, who did that? Who got Eddie Lacy? Oh, is it Thomas? Back back. What is going on here? Oh, what oh. is going on here? Eddie Lacy and Sammy Watkins back oh. to back. Kevin Get Coleman goes next. Getting the shakes. Ugh. And it was our boy Thomas Takes, Sam yeah. Yeah. Sammy Watkins. Shocker. Yeah. That, uh, that's that why sounds I'm like worried a- about him contending this year. Uh, Thomas Take makes some odd picks that uh, make that felt good. that felt like a Thomas Take move. So he's got Tom Brady, Ezekiel Elliott, Leonard Fournette, Julian Edelman, and Sammy Watkins. Don't really hate it. Uh, one of his guys may not be playing for six weeks. Another one is a rookie. Another one is 40 years old. Another one depends on that 40-year-old guy. And then the other one's Sammy Watkins, who his quarterback is Jared Goff. So, oh, I don't know. Risky. Risky proposition there. Could be a genius. Could fall flat on your face. It's Team Torres's pick. Or the team that to be named later depending on who he drafts, according to Orlando. So he's taking a sweet time, 30 seconds. Got Jordan Howard, Ty Montgomery, Brandon Cooks, and Michael Crabtree. Here's the thing. I bet you that Sammy Watkins pick got in Orlando's head, just like uh, that's been. That is. That is that's exactly time. what but No, here 18 we go. Seconds. Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs. Okay. Stephon. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that pick. There's, Y'all have uh, to remind me who is even playing quarterback for the Vikings this year. Noodle Arms. Uh, yep. It is Sammy Diggs. Brad. He's he's the – actually, he's, he, he was the most accurate quarterback ever in the NFL last year as the highest completion percentage. Now all of his balls went under five yards, but <laughs> – so uh, Cam Newton and then Kirk Cousins, the quarterbacks are coming off because I sent everybody into a panic, taking Matty Ice yeah. off the board. So and I love Newton, this. Kirk Cousins. I love that quarterbacks are going off the board right now because honestly, any for me, and this is a rule I've always kind of lived by, is after round eight, round ten, that's when you start looking at quarterbacks, and we're not even in round seven yet. So I'm loving that all these quarterbacks. And I'm just wondering who is at the top. Okay. I, Okay, I think I know. If you're true right. to your rankings, that was, then that was you've been a bit saying. of a reach, but that's a guy I feel like won't be available. Hey, in my next I don't pick. like. I know Dan doesn't like that. He, I think he's suspended for four games, but I like three. Martin. I no, like he's him. suspended three games. 
and then I'll just be hurt for that fourth one. And uh, yeah, I know, Andrew yeah. Luck, Andrew Luck off the board and Amir Adula. Uh, so here we go. We're getting into it now, guys. We are just about halfway through it. We're seventy fifth pick overall, the fifth pick in the sixth round, and that pick is Mike Gillisley. Mm. Uh, it's uh. I believe that's the same Dakota Day. Uh, I believe that's another fan of the site. Um, I think he's the one who took Eddie Lacy. So uh, Lacy and Gillisley is your backfield. I'm sure he might have some other guys, uh, but I'm not a fan of that uh, that coming off so far. No, but I guess that's what happens when you target – uh, your quarterback and wide receivers early on, you kind of stuck with whatever stuff that running back. But I do see what you're saying. Yeah, um, I got a plan. I got a plan to bounce back from this thing. What is it? <laughs> suspense. For me to know and you to find out. All you to find out. Thanks for joining us on My Fantasy Podcast, the live MyFantasySportsTalk.com Fantasy Draft Edition. We're letting it play out all in front of you. I know there's not as much back and forth. I'm sorry. I'm in a zone. Hopefully it's entertaining for you. At least you get to see what's it behind uh, not only the picks that we're telling you about, but a little bit behind uh, the thought process of those picks as well as we make them. I think you can see the temptation and kind of the letdown when they see your man taking or anybody's man taking. Paul Perkins is off the board next. And I take uh, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson. So, okay. I know where I know where Dan is at. I know where Dan is at. I uh I actually had a wide receiver that I wanted ranked ahead of Deshaun Jackson, but uh, I already have a Saints wide receiver on my team and Michael Thomas. I would have selected Willie Sneed actually ahead of Deshaun Jackson, but I just didn't want two receivers on the same team constantly in my starting lineup. Um, it's a headache. I so. did that with the Detroit Lions several years ago with um, uh, um, well, Reggie Bush and Joy Bell. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was tough. Some, some weeks I played both of them. LeGarrette Blunt goes off the board. What do you think about LeGarrette Blunt, Dan? Uh, not very high on him. I'm not high on uh, the Eagles' running game in general. But, uh, I mean, there's rumors of him being cut and then being the featured back, and they have so many damn backs on their roster. So I envision a similar uh, New England scenario creeping up in Philadelphia. Jimmy Graham goes off the board. Not real high on Jimmy Graham just because of the scheme in Seattle, as I let you guys know last week. Guess he didn't make my top ten tight ends. He was in my top five, maybe even my. He might have been my third ranked tight end. So I am high on Jimmy Graham. I was hoping he might last a little bit longer, but uh, we've had our fair share of tight ends go off the board. Seventy ninth pick was Jimmy Graham. Oh, oh Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston. Oh, there goes your quarterback, Dan. There goes your quarterback. Now Theo Riddick off the board now. Now comes decision time. And new braids up. And uh, Casey Birch, who grabbed my number one quarterback, uh, Jameis Winston, he wrote about him today in his sleeper piece. So uh, he's going off of what he writes. And it's good to see that Adrian Peterson is still on the board because uh, even in a 14-man league, we have some people with common sense. I did a draft on Sunday. Adrian Peterson went in the second round, and it was a 10-man league. That's oh even worse. So uh, it's good to see him still on the board because he does not deserve to be drafted. He will be, but he won't perform that way. Uh, I think that's a new breeds pick, Adrian Peterson. No, I hope it him. is. Skipped him. Skipped him. Sorry, guys. I'm doing a little bit of research. Charles. <laughs> All right. Here you go, guys. Fat Rob. Okay. <clears throat> Robert Kelly. We'll see. Supposed yeah. to starting running back. We have different views on our uh, NFL backfields. 
I have cry was high on Kareem Hunt compared to your Spencer Ware. I'm high on P Ryan ahead of Fat Rob there. Um, so it'll oh, be- I love that pick, Willie Sneed. Willie Sneed, Darren Coppage. Is he putting together a good team or what? Probably not because he has Spencer Ware. But wow, I would have taken Spencer Ware all day. Well, as an owner of Kareem Hunt, I hope uh, Spencer Ware does not do very well because yeah. if he does, that won't help my chances. Well, what you were just talking about with the uh, Redskins backfield, Piron is listed third in the depth chart, as far as I can tell right now. Chris Thompson is ahead of him. Yeah, yep. Uh, it's Robert Thompson. Kelly's job to l- either solidify or lose, let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. If you just listen to what uh, Jay Gruden has said, I mean, they're stringing P. P. Ryan along. But he's still get, he might be listed as 13, but he's still getting first-team reps, and it's basically Fat Rob and P. Ryan switching – the first and second down and carries and Thompson. And I like, and I like, I like P Ryan. I do like P Ryan, but it, it, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not time. It's not time like that. It's not time. Newbreed says so. You know, you may be looking at a Demarco Murray, De- Derrick Henry type situation there. Although P and Ryan, it, it P- might be not time on Dennis Durso was ten seconds left to pick. And oh, Derek makes- Carr went with the quarterback. My Carr. guy who led me to a championship last year. Woo-wee. He is going to start off round seven. And if this keeps going, I may have to end up breaking one of my rules. So one of my fantasy rules because we are in Darren McFad, oh. who Thomas Take is probably uh, I stuck that in his w- tongue right now that he didn't uh, draft McFadden as that handcuff. I just thought that would have went a little bit lower. Yeah, I mean, it, it, basically, you're you're spending a seventh round pick on a person you're going to start. You hope five games because they do have a bye week during one of the weeks. The Cowboys do so. Uh, seventh round pick for that hope that best five games, but probably four. That's that's a little risky. This one's tough, guys. Devontae Parker went, and now New Breed is on the clock. This is tough, guys. <clears throat> I could really screw this up. That's what we're all counting on right now. Who's it going to be? Trying to sneak in that last minute research, guys. Hang on. Hang on. What's the time? What's the time on the clock? See, uh, there is 35 seconds left, I believe. 30 seconds. See, here's the thing. All my research is already up here. And Newbury, I know you don't want to look up, but I'm pointing to my head. So it's all up there. Here, ask me. I'll give you some tips. Don't need it. Debatable. <laughs> so I, I picked Terrence West. Uh, Jamison Crowder goes next. Uh, I, I don't mind that West pick. I, I, I don't mind it at all. Uh, he's supposed to be the future back. You know, you have Woodhead done passing situations, but. West will be getting bulk of the carries. Anytime you can get a supposed starting running back in the seventh round, I think that's – I mean, that's why I went with him because he was nowhere on my – in my mental draft board. I know that you, Dan said you had it all laid out in your head, but if you don't know how things are playing out, you can't ever predict that. And that's why I'm worried about my next pick. I'm three away. There's three picks before me. Two of the three have the position I'm going for already drafted. So there's only one that I'm, I need to worry about. And – uh I'm watching. So injured reserve, which is Casey Birch. Stole my guy last time in Jameis Winston. Orlando, you've been quiet. What What's your, your scheming, scheming and plotting looking like there? Um, 
I know you've been doing it for about six months now. Let's take a look at uh, Orlando's team. Jordan Howard, Ty Montgomery, Brandon Cooks, Michael Crabtree, Stefan Diggs, and Doug Martin. So uh, how you liking it, man? Is this going to your plan somewhat? And not exactly going to any plan. Uh, it goes your boy, Forte. But, yeah, it took some of the backup players. Um, some picks, um, I maybe wouldn't have liked to take at that position, but it's just the way that the draft has gone. And just like you with Spencer, where there's some picks that went far, far away, so he's got to kind of plan differently or have a backup plan in case that were to happen. And Pierre, Matt Forte, that's a – I do not like that pick. 89th overall to Casey Birch. And then Colby Gatz, the guy I was worried about taking – quarterback because he does not have one yet. I thought he was going to take my guy who I take right here, the lovely Marcus Mariota, who uh, yeah, there's I your believe. quarterback. Hey, it's only round seven, Dan. I know. I had to. There were so many quarterbacks gone off the board. So you're really high on him this year then? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think he has top ten capabilities. And just with some of the other names that I would have targeted, like Dak or, or Matthew Stafford, um, I just I, I think Mariota is going to score more points than than both of them. So uh, he's a guy that I wanted. I was hoping to wait until at least round eight, but I mean we're half a round away from that. So I was okay taking him round seven and being set at quarterback basically for the rest of the draft because I I don't draft backup quarterbacks. So you got Marcus Mariota, Todd Gurley, Joe Mixon, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Kareem Hunt, and Deshaun Jackson. Has that gone to plan according to your mental chart board? Not really, no. Um, the running back, I mean, I, I, I knew I wanted to target Mixon and Hunt, um, but I wasn't necessarily expecting to get them in the rounds that I got them in. Uh, but I'm happy I got my number one wide receiver in Michael Thomas. That was the first guy that I really wanted and was targeting. So overall, I'm happy with my team. We'll see how the depth plays out because you always know. You look at your starting lineup; it always looks great. There's going to be injuries. There goes Adrian Peterson. By I was Thomas about to Tate. say, man, we're on. Oh, that was God. the 95th pick. He was ranked 71th talent overall by ESPN, and he went 95th. I was just wondering when he's going to go off the board. AP gone 95th, uh, and then goes Zach Ertz. I love this pick, Tyler Eifert. I know he's had some health concerns, but what he mentioned, if he's healthy, especially in that Bengals offense, especially there's no Andy doubt that this guy's a stud. That's I'm right. Important, I, there's no doubt I have to take another tight end, obviously, with Tyler, Tyler Eifert. You're always rolling that dice. But I love what he can do in healthy because he produces numbers and touchdowns importantly. That's several big tight ends off the board already, I know. Probably the top five or six or so. Kyle Rudolph, Kyle Rudolph is sitting out there at 77. Everybody's passing up my boy Eric Decker too. Uh, it's rightfully show, so as they should because not according to what a lot of he, Titans fans try to tell me. <laughs> they think he's the number one receiver going into Week One. Well, according to the Bills fans here, Tyrod is a franchise quarterback. Mm. So you make the decision, Derek Henry. There's one Titan going off the board at ninety eight. I, I like that pick a lot. If Murray gets hit, hurt at any point, yeah, I think that's a, that's a solid get. That was DDT, and so he comes up next, and then Orlando has the 100th pick of the My Fantasy Sports Talk 2017 Fantasy League draft. All right, well, I know this is going to get Dan talking. Oh, no, 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 it's not my pick yet. Soccer superstars, DDT. Let's see what, he, see what he has yet. Cam Newton, Melvin Gordon, Derek Henry, Des Bryant, Larry Fitzgerald, Jordan Reed, Kirk Cousins, and now Duke Johnson. He's drafted two quarterbacks in his first eight picks. Wow. I, I took my Seven man, picks. Mr. Prescott. And then go, there goes Dak. And then Mike Wallace off the board. We're going to have some trouble, guys. I got kicked out of the draft. No. All right, pick is coming. So let's see who's who's uh, who's auto picks for you. What? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Oh, uh, uh, pick some. Dan will be coming back. What happened? He got kicked <laughs> off. He had, he had having some problems, but we'll go ahead. We're fine. We're ready to go ahead and carry the show. Who's got? So Corey Davis. How do you like that, Ryan? I know you're a big Titans guy. How do you feel about that Corey Davis pick? He just stole one of my picks. Probably my next pick. To be honest with you, I don't like it. I don't like it. The hell, bro? 
You well, see, this is a good thing because in, in the later rounds, you kind of see guys go you normally wouldn't see, but these are kind of those dart throws you, t- you take. You're kind of like in a dead, you know, like a, like a dead end. You don't know exactly which route to take. I mean, I could go you against might... everything I've been preaching and take Rashard Matthews, the other Titans receiver, <laughs> uh, which would not be a bad option, I don't think. I just don't know. So, um... This is Matt Aguirre from the People's Podcast. We're in round eight. Hey, how, how is his, his team coming along? Let's see. Lay it the smack down. He has DeMarco Murray, Mark Ingram, Julio Jones, Golden Tate, Brandon Marshall, Paul Perkins, and Cameron Meredith. Um, well, the fact that Julio fell away to the ninth, is, it's, it's crazy. But that's, that's yeah. one thing you never expect about some of these drafts. That, that was a stick right there. Um, he may be looking at quarterback right here. I, I don't know. We're, we're getting, I don't know what his plan is at quarterback, but quarterback, tight end, he doesn't have either one of those. Uh, pretty stacked. Otherwise, he's kind of balancing it out. Uh, kind of heavy on running back with DeMarco, Mark Ingram, Paul Perkins, and Cameron Meredith. Oh, Cameron Meredith is a receiver. Yeah. There Eric Decker. Decker. Yep. So but he took my boy. He took my boy. Uh, so yet another receiver, Eric Decker. I wasn't going to take Eric Decker, though, Matt. I wasn't going to take Eric Decker, so you're going to have him. Maybe he's high um, on Decker, like the Titans fans are. Don't know what happened to Dan. I just hope that he's actually making this pick. He, I think he probably did. Hunter Henry. Um, that, that that wasn't an auto pick by any means, so he probably made that pick, did uh, Dan Shaw. We'll see if we can get him back in here on the draft. Yeah. Um, but not a bad pick if he's going for that that, that tight end. I think Hunter Henry's going to get work this year. Uh, showed a lot out of Arkansas last year. Um, Antonio Gates is just getting old, man. He can't keep doing this forever. Got to be like 37, 38 now. So. Malachi is picking now. Let's see what Malachi's got. Russell Wilson, Christian McCaffrey, C.J. Anderson, Odell Beckham, Amari Cooper, Martellus Bennett, LeGarrette Blunt, and now Adam Thielen from Minnesota. I like um, I, I like Malachi's team right now. I really like his team. You get Odell yeah, and no, Amari, cool. and then I know Dan's not big on Russell Wilson, but he's a scary-ass fantasy player, okay? Well, he's he's scary good. with his legs. I mean, he is yeah. getting pretty – but that, that he's line be for me. He's yeah, got to be no, He wasn't last year. No, and that wasn't entirely on him. He played hurt. He played hurt, and that, that hurt his rushing. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of put it together towards the end of the season. But if you drafted him in the early – what did he go last year? Is the third quarterback overall? Uh, somewhere in the third or fourth round early on. And that definitely hurt you if you – wasted a top three or four pick on a guy like Russell Wilson. But I think he has more daily fantasy value, to be honest with you. I'm not sure I would have touched him in my league this year either because Dan has a little bit of a point there coming off the injury and not having a healthy last year scares me a little bit too. So, uh, But I I like him in daily fantasy. So it looks like it's my pick, guys. And there's no hesitation about this one. I'm ending – is Nick Pertons out there? I'm ending this debate right now. What I told you guys last week, it's not CJ Procise. It's not even Eddie Lacy. That back to have in the Seattle backfield is this guy. Make sure I get the right guy. Thomas oh, Ross, sure. drafted by Team New Breed. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there he is. There's the man. Back. 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 He was waiting for that Whoa. pick. He was Oof. waiting for that pick. Dan's back yeah. with hate. Yeah, and uh, that, that pick made me happy. I'm now drafting via a mobile phone, um, so it's a little bit different setup for me. It's, it's not. The, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. It, it, it works fine for me. Yeah, it's a, it's a, the layout on the computer is a lot nicer. You can actually view. It's just a little bit different layout. And You guys uh, are taking a hell of a risk with those phones. I don't trust them. I will not, do, unless I absolutely emergency or something. I will, I will say my phone, phone will not shut off on me like a laptop will. So I, 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 I do have. 
Now, I don't know what ESPN's been doing with the changes they made with the Flash player this year. Um, and believe me, ESPN, I know. I'm on top of you. It's you. You changed it because a couple of years ago, I couldn't use Internet Explorer anymore because you made a change. Now I'm having trouble with Flash player and a lot of different browsers uh, with your draft interface this year's ESPN. I don't know what you're doing, but I finally figured that out and downloaded the right Flash adapter uh, or plug-in to... Uh, so I can play you, and but you gave the option of uh, ESPN Draft Lite, and I don't even trust that on a computer, guys. I did it, but I made a couple of bad picks and mistakes last night trying that. So you guys using a phone, I feel for you. Scurry, some scurry stuff. It was Van Stafford, team coverage. There goes another tight end, New Reeds, Richard Matthews. And the uh, – was he taken before – has Corey Davis come off the board? I can't tell. I'm like – Yeah, Corey yeah. Davis was, unfortunately. Yeah. And Jonathan Stewart. So who's coming to Newbury? You are coming up pretty soon, right? I am the next pick, and I'm scared, guys. I'm a little scared. I see you. I, I saw that blank stare in your face. I'm going to do something that both you guys are going to probably shug, shug your shoulders at because uh, from last week's podcast, you're not going to like this move. But um, I don't I don't like it at this particular – I mean, I, I don't hate it at this particular point in the draft. So Jordan Matthews is coming off next. <clears throat> So I think I know where you're going here. Who is that? Is it not just one specific player? <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to take three and one pick? Yeah, it's going to be well, one specific. 11. Huh? You could take 11 players but at once by selecting a defense. Uh, now, you, now you're – you're really thinking, Dan. No, you're overthinking it. It's only round nine. No. I, I'm not. I'm, I ain't going like this. So I'll, I'll go ahead and speed this draft up. Uh, there's no hesitation there. Ted again. Okay. Wait. The yeah. second wide receiver on the depth chart of the Saints wow. <laughs> with Drew Brees. He'll get work. It was either him or Randall Cobb. I almost got Randall Cobb. Why is Randall Cobb so down this year? Does Randall Cobb not provide any fantasy value at all anymore? Uh, I mean, even with his, all the opportunities he was given uh, the last few years, he, his numbers just aren't uh, fantasy production. Well, and now that I said that I had him last year and I sat him most weeks, I'm not sure he played. I'm, I'm not. Well, I don't sure think he was fully why. healthy, right? He, he, I don't no. think he was fully healthy. No, no, but that's a problem too. And at least my another, phone tells me what. There's another guy I had on my board, guys, Latavius Murray. Are we not high at him at all in Minnesota now this year? I am personally not. Jamal Williams, the running back to own in Green Bay, despite whatever Brandon Reed will tell you. Uh, in Green Bay? But, but no, exactly. What I've been telling you guys is there's not a running back to own in Green Bay. Never will be. Just like Corey the Coleman. England Patriots. We've got a slew here. Corey Coleman, which was on my list. Zay Jones and J.J. Nelson. Uh, outlook on Zay Jones there, Dan. Uh, as long as Tyrod Taylor is quarterback, there is no outlook. It <laughs> looks grim. It looks bleak. It's near death. So, so no need to ask about any other Buffalo Bills wide receiver. It was Randall Cobb. There yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I think if Nathan Peterman wins the job, which I think he will by midseason, I think that'll boost up Zay's value. But uh, I got, so I got my man. Goes off the board. Broncos goes off the D, uh, board 127. I got my man CJ Prosize. And I'm sure Nick Pertens is happy with that selection, unlike – Brandon's pick of Thomas Rawls that disappointed him greatly. <laughs> Newbies, Newbies, you're I see you locked in. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I'm about to really shock y'all. I am about to really shock y'all. I got a few picks, though, so talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. The 2017 League draft. Well, I'm coming up in the two or two or three picks. Away. Does that mean Orlando are you coming up? I can't even see. Right. This phone setup is so stupid. I see, I got the advantage picks. now. Y'all are using phones, and I ain't with that jive nonsense. I can see, I'm still used to using phones. Just tell me where you're at, Dan. I can just walk you straight through it. Yes. I'll come walk with you at your at your mobile store. So am I, I think I'm up next. I'm on deck? No. Yes. I think I'm on deck. Yes, I am on deck. I think I'm about to really shock y'all here. Taking a defense. My number one defense of 2017 is the Vikings, and I'm able to, to snag them with a couple a couple defenses came off the board, the Broncos and Seahawks. Um, I just I like the Vikings this year, their turnover ability, and uh, they always seem to take some back to the house each each year. All right. After further evaluation, it's not time to shock you guys quite yet. We're anxiously awaiting, so make sure you let us know before you do so we can prepare ourselves. Oh, you will know. Okay, what? who is picking now anyway? Is this, uh, who is this? Who's up? It's Malachi. So there goes that Vikings D, Seattle D, Broncos D. I'm not even paying attention over here. But I did just figure out a plan in my head, guys. I know the, I know the path of, of what I'm going to do at least now. Based on who is drafted and who has been taken off the board, I know exactly what I'm about to do. Picks one through – how many rounds is it? 16? 15? 16? Six, 16 rounds. Yep. I know what I'm doing rounds one through six – or through the 16th round anyway. Dante Monk, another defense. Cardinals defense goes off the board. Wow. Yeah, that Moncrief pick, that's that's great value for where he's being drafted. I was I was looking at him, but you got to think. Not bad. I mean, Colts number two receiver with a guy who's going to sling the ball. Mm-hmm. I like that pick by Colby. And what happened with the injury situation with Sterling Shepard while I'm thinking about it, guys? Uh, not that be serious. Yeah, he's going to be he played the preseason the other night. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to be back. And now with Odell Beckham possibly missing week one or two, that would boost his value greatly as well, at least for the beginning of the year. But I think he's always going to have a consistent targets uh, in that offense. Was that the guy with the gruesome injury? Yes. Yeah, gruesome. And so he's playing in the preseason just the other gruesome. night? Uh-huh. Not quite that gruesome, then, huh? Don't listen to <laughs> supposed eyewitnesses all the time. We've learned our lesson. Woo-hoo. Okay, Chris Thompson goes. There goes the Patriots defense, and now the one and only new breed is up. And I'm gonna go ahead and snag the guy, man. I'm gonna go ahead and snag him. I'm snagging Sterling Shepard. Hey, it's not bad for exactly where you got. I think he's gone a little bit under the radar. You know what I think is going to depend on that is what Brandon Marshall does this year. Is you know is he going to be ready? Is he going to have a good year? Sterling Shepard provides, provides a little bit more versatility and can catch the ball out of the backfield a little bit more than Brandon Marshall, plus he knows the system at least one year better. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't like Kenny Britt or the Cleveland Browns, though, so I'm not going there. You got Josh Doxson. Uh, of the Washington uh, Redskins. Uh, so let me go back. Yeah, that's the overall. Um, so, Sterling Shepard, Shane Vereen, then Alvin Kamara. You like uh, Kamara, Dan, out of Tennessee? I do. I do. I think he's going to be their best back by the end of the year um, and the one who gives you the most fantasy relevance uh, when you're looking in, into your playoffs down that home stretch. Uh, Adrian Peterson, I don't think he's going to be able to be seeing touches by week 8 to 10. Um, I think he's just going to break down. It's going to be Ingram and Kamara, and Kamara is the fresher, honestly, better back at this point. Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay. Ah, that's who I wanted with my next pick. I'm very high on Kenny Galladay this year. I think he's going to end up being the Lions' number one receiver 
um, when when the season is said and done. Ah, who took him? Show me your titties. Is that that Darren guy? Is that Darren? <laughs> Or is that Dennis? I think that's that's Dennis Durso, one of the fans. The fans are really screwing us this year, Newt Brandon. I mean, God, that Spencer yeah. Weir, that hurt me, man. The Spencer oh. Weir hurt me. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, that Kenny Galladay one, that kind Wait, of. Is he Eddie Rowdy? Eddie Rowdy? It hurt my soul. It hurt my soul. Dang. It almost never goes according to plan, right, guys? I mean, one wrinkle goes wrong. Let's go. See what you got. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. That really, uh, that uh, that one hurt me. That hurt. That's who I wanted. I'm going. I think I'm going to be reaching with my next pick. I know there's a guy that I. I was going to wait until later, but now with, I mean, I didn't think get, Kenny Galladay was going to be selected for at least another round or two minimum. Um, so I think we got some players with us. So I'm going to have to just reach for a couple of the sleepers that I want to get eventually on my team. Yeah, I'm with you there. We're about to reach right here. Silence. Well, you, you know, you, you, you're still on the clock, and you said you're about to reach, and we expected a pick, right? <laughs> well, here you go, Dan Shaw. Bam. Jeremy Hill. The third there goes back. Tyrod. Well, is that well, Ryan? I'm what, uh, so oh, I'm no. thinking with Jeremy Hill. Uh, he's been the starter, is, is projected second right now behind Joe Mixon. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, yeah. It's either a handcuff in case something happens with Mixon. I mean, Jeremy Hill has had flashes of great games. He knows the system. He's been in there. We'll see what happens. That's not 143rd pick for a maybe borderline RB2 guy. We'll see what happens. Tyrod, Joe Williams, Kenny Britt goes off the board. Jamal oh, yeah. Charles. Jamal Charles. Yeah. I'm thinking about him, uh, man. Is there? Has he got anything left, guys? Jamal? No, he's done. Not even like him. AP, like AP, right? Yep, he's done. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with Dan there. Evan Ingram scratched that one off my board. That was my my reach. It was a little bit earlier than I wanted to grab him at, but uh, I think he's going to be dynamic uh, in that Giants passing game. They they are putting him all over the field, and in preseason, he's looked like he's already built a rapport with Eli Manning. He looks good. So I, as a backup tight end for me, I like it. That could be, yeah, that could be a great position for him to be in, uh, been drafted in really seriously because there's been tight ends that had success in that offense, and we'll see, especially when you have not much of a running game that you need that crutch. Um, I like it. I like it. So let's look at Dan Shalk's team, Romo the dog, Marcus Mariota, Todd Gurley, Joe Mixon, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Hunter Henry, Kareem Hunt, Eric Vikings, defense, uh, Deshaun Jackson, Jamal Williams, then Evan Ingram. So Eric Ebron's off, and then Kevin White is off. Moving on through this. So our boy Thomas Take is up next. Um, let me take take a look at his team real quick. Tom Brady, Ezekiel Elliott, Leonard Fournette, Julian Edelman, Sammy Watkins, Amir Abdullah, Seattle Seahawks defense, Adrian Peters. It was, it was – <laughs> Can you say Thomas, layup? Thomas Take could fall on his face this year, Dan. Yeah, he he's – Zay yeah. Jones, the Buffalo Bill. I, I will tell you this. Him. I think Ryan Thomas has the worst draft of anybody in this league. I hope he's listening because you I don't know what you're doing right now. Like you you have, you're, you have this reputation that you project out to people of how great you are, but this draft is a dud. This draft is belongs in the retirement home with the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, OJ Howard goes off the board. Another guy off my on my list. Uh, Taylor Gabriel and the Chiefs uh, defense. Uh, so, yeah, I think Thomas Take. This could go one of two ways for you, man. Uh, I, I just hope everybody stays healthy and clicks for you because this could be a bad year for you. Uh, you need some luck. You're gonna need some luck and magic. So right now it's our man DDT gets two picks in a row. 
kind of envious of that situation. I'd rather be taken out of the pressure situation and just not pick two picks back to back of what the best of what's left. Orlando. Let's take a look at your team real quick, dog. Uh, you got Dak Prescott, Jordan Howard, Ty Montgomery, Brandon Cooks, Michael Crabtree, Tyler Eifert, Stephon Diggs, Chiefs defense, Doug Martin, Tyrell Williams, and you took your boy CJ Pro Size. I had to. I talked him up so much. I had someone call me out saying that he was. They saw him in my uh, risk reward article, so I kind of had to step it up. But it's, I got him at the round I loved him too. I didn't reach for him. He was ahead of a couple guys that. Um, that went after him too. So um, at that pick, especially with Thomas Ross, oh, that was one of my guys. And Eddie mm -hmm. Lacy going gone just made it a lot easier. DDP, DDP just picked a tight end, Austin Hooper, and then John Brown receiver back to back. Yeah, so we're, like we're now Brown pick. We're now in round deep. twelve. Yeah, we're getting Have deep. You, you guys looked at bye weeks yet? I just did. Mm -hmm. Half of my team is on bye week eight. So I know that week. sucks. If it happens like that, it sucks, but that's not something I strategize for. I'm not paying attention. I don't really want to stack guys from one team, period, but if it happens that way, it just happens that way. Andy Dalton was picked 156. What? Who did that one? A smart guy. Not me. Oh, oh my Lord. My head is not, my head hurts. Why, what happened? A kicker uh -huh. got drafted. He is the best, though. Let's be honest about it, guys. No, Justin Tucker is the best. No, no, Stephen oh, yeah, has more Justin opportunities. Justin Tucker, fantasy wise, has been the best. Yeah. Legatron. John Ross, and then Texans defense. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Thomas Take is just—I don't even know anymore. Maybe he's just throwing it away. He doesn't care. Oh no, he cares. Trust me, because oh, I've been yeah. telling him how bad he is. That you got to be in one of the MFST championships to to start talking mess, and he's had you opportunities. You know that Orlando. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. I'm on the clock. <laughs> Leave Dan alone. He's talking. <laughs> talking to himself. I don't know what he's saying. He's hurting my head. Okay. Paul Beasley, nice. great pick, Dan. Great, great, pick. great pick. He was higher Keep than going. that. He was higher than that in a couple of my mocks that I took him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the number two, and uh, he's going to get work this year. That's the plan. I hope so, and uh, I think it adds. Are we PPR? Are we PPR? I forget. Half, half point PPR. Okay. Uh, great pick up there. Great pick up. You'll probably draft Jason Witten in round 14 or 15. Unless Orlando beats me there first, but I also already have two tight ends, so that might. Uh, well, I was hoping Kai shift. Rudolph because Kai Rudolph felt pretty pretty low. I was hoping to grab him, but yep. uh, he's gone. So, uh, uh, hopefully, there's another guy I'm targeting that'll be there. And I've seen him go pretty at the end of the barrel in a lot of drafts. Well, Marvin Jones, nice pick. He should be due for bounce back year. Started out strong last year and then kind of faded. I'm uh, whoever whoever stole Kenny Galladay from me is going to be reaping the rewards of that. Okay, there goes Rex Burkhead. The question is: Will Jared Goff be drafted? Brandon? Oh yeah, I th I th yes. Ryan's going to take him. Nah, <laughs> he, shouldn't be. he shouldn't be, but I'm not going to say he's not going to be. I got to take a kicker. I got to take a kicker. What? Just playing. Oh. So we're at pick 166. It is yours truly. Hmm. 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 So how many mock drafts did you do, did y'all do prior to this, or is this kind of like confident thing? Um, I mean, I wouldn't do. I I would actually do a lot of auto pick mock drafts just to see where players would go. 
not necessarily where I would draft them just to, to check out ADPs and stuff like that, but I would do that constantly. And then I've had a couple of actual leagues before this one, so that's kind of helped as well. Uber Eats, you only got 10 seconds left. Time to make a pick. Time to decide. Or you've given up hope on your skill and you want auto pick. Alan Hearns. <laughs> left him speechless. Yeah, Brandon doesn't know what to say. Oh, there, goes, there, goes Ryan, there, goes, there, goes, there goes Ryan Thomas calling you out. What, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like the Blake Bortles situation, but he's the number two guy in Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for this late, we're we're it's, uh, this is such a deep draft. Like a lot of guys don't do fourteen team drafts. This is get this gets pretty slim pickings towards the end. Well, and I didn't want a kicker, and I don't need another. I don't want to take another quarterback. Uh, I'm not. My, I'm not concerned with my defense yet. But uh, I know exactly who this next pick is going to be. Kobe Fleener. Is that who you wanted? That one, wow. That's what you were talking about there, Brandon? A little Kobe yeah. Fleener in your life? The, the dude I'm about to take is not even on anyone's radar. Cooper Cup goes next. And Eli Manning, the Eli quarterback. Manning. Uh, did he make it further Let's than I did last give year? Give a little applause to Eli. I took him like round breeds. eight or nine last year, didn't I, Dan? I, kind of, uh, I wanted him because you talked him up. So I took him a little bit earlier in thirteen. Eight or nine, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so here we go. The guy who screwed me once this draft, Darren Coppage, but I doubt he, this guy, the guy I'm about to take is not on y'all's radar. We've talked about him on the podcast. He's not on y'all's radar. I talked I him up a little bit. He's on my radar. Who's he going to be, Dan? And I took him off because he's going to be terrible. Who's he going to be, Dan? I mean, he's, he, he, this might be the worst pick that you've ever made, this one this one coming up. Who? Uh, I just... You. I had, you. You don't even know what the hell this I'm going to do. Because he's not. Because you said he's not on your radar. Our radar. I know who this Adam is. Adam Vinatieri. It's, it's not going to be a kicker. Oh, Coppage oh, did not screw me there. He took Vinatieri. Y'all want to yeah. take a guess right quick? But I mean, I'll tell you this. It's my pick, so I got no shame. It's a running back. we go to the running backs here. We got time. We got a minute ten. Y'all tell me who my next pick is. You got one guess each. We're in, we're in pick one seventy one in the thirteenth round. We're almost through this thing. It's a running back. Uh, I don't want to say because I hope it's not the guy I want. So I'm not uh, saying. I'll say James. Not Conner. saying. Huh? Orlando. James Conner. Nope. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I would have never guessed. I told you. This guy's going to get work for one of the worst teams. Yeah, I think he's going to be their third string back. There he goes, Joe James Conner. Now that guy's going to be a stud if Bill goes down. He can't be, and he's top three in the league in jersey sales already. What? That tells me. James Conner is number three in the league in jersey sales since he's been drafted. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. So I have a deep sleeper coming up. My picks are coming up. I'm already stacking my list on y'all. What, what position is it, Orlando? Well, I have a wide receiver that I might take first. Maybe not so much sleeper, but the running back I have in mind is definitely a sleeper. Mm. But I'm confident that no one's even going to look at this running back I'm looking at that I could grab the wide receiver that I want. I can actually flip-flop him if I want. Well, it depends. I still got like six picks ahead of me, so I better stay quiet. you got to be careful doing the live podcast. I think these guys are listening. I, th I think Spencer Ware seeped through my pores. and then okay. well, well, guys like Matt <laughs> Bryan and Adam and Terry going, I'm not, I might get the guys that I want. Ah, oh. 
Oh damn, you sly was, dog. What happened? Marlon Mack. That's Marlon. my that was my guy. Marlon Mack. Oh yeah. He'll be the starter in Indy. He Listen. is going to be a starter in Indy. I like that, Dan. I like Frank that. Or hit checks into the nursing home. He little sniping little devil you, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> little sniping little devil you. <laughs> Well, you know what? Yeah. Even though Marlon Mack. No, Marlon Mack's going to end the season as a number one. I, I like Marlon Mack a lot. The truth is, he doesn't wet my whistle. He really uh, doesn't wet my whistle. But Spencer <laughs> Ware does. <laughs> yes. Spencer Ware was also taken like seven rounds ago, too. So if that means anything, it means that Marlon Mack is such better value. What if I stressed all. Great value. Um, leading up to the, you see, Brandon, you were supposed to be taking notes when I was when I was talking and and you know, giving these tidbits out. Value building. I'm stacking. It was Jason Witten. I'm stacking my team over here. Y'all don't understand how I'm stacking my team. Uh, you, you're stacking it, stacking it poorly. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We'll see. We'll see. Oof. Newbreed, have you looked at your running backs? Let's look at Brandon's team now. We got Isaiah Crowell, decent. You got Fat Rob as your number two running back. Thomas that Rawls. Doesn't necessarily there. mean he's going to be my number two running back. Wow. Look at my running back depth. Look at my running back depth. I'm not saying anything good. Let's see, Thomas Rawls. All, all I need is I will one, say one running back, two, maybe a flex. I need three of these guys to play: Crowell, mm. Kelly, West, Rawls, Jeremy Hill. Tim Hightower, all the, all those guys are number two or number one on the depth chart right now. Oof. You know, new breed, leading up to next year, I will give you pointers on the side if you'd like. like I can. I don't sit need down your pointers. I don't need your pointers. If you're good enough, I'll see you in the championship. That there's my point oh. to you. There's my point to you. It ain't gonna be Ryan Thomas, that's for sure. You're out, dog. I can tell right now by your draft, you're out. <laughs> that is true. Yes, nobody. I think it would, Brian Thomas will be the new last place Lando, and that might shift Lando up into the second last place Lando. <laughs> no, 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 because uh, uh, New Breeds is going to be there. So I'll be third uh, place. Y'all okay. are crazy. Y'all are crazy <laughs> in a heart attack. Y'all are crazy in a heart attack. Okay, let me look at. Uh, I do like what D DDT is doing. So let's take take a look at DDT real quick. Uh, who is about to pick two times in a row? Cam Newton, Melvin Gordon, Derek Henry, Des Bryant, Larry Fitzgerald, Jordan Reed, Duke Johnson, Broncos D, Kirk Cousins, Randall Cobb, Austin Hooper, and John Brown. The only thing I don't like that he did oh is drafted two quarterbacks in like the first seven rounds. That's the only thing I don't I like that you did. Not a fan of that team whatsoever. He is Derek Henry is a starter. Who is that team? Dylan Davis Toronto. I don't like that. Team yeah, at all. he needs. I don't a, think Larry Fitz is he, even a start. You, need to, you need to focus. He's picking right now. It's one eighty-two. You need to focus. Oh, on he's listening to you right now. He's about to hop on. He's going to tell you what's up. Don't some running backs. Don't do yourself, man. He needs some running backs if there's any left. Don't let the people at this fantasy football convention see this draft. And then he goes, <laughs> Dan Bailey. Here we go. You will be asked to leave. I'm just messing, but not really. Well, he took Dan Bailey in the 14th round. That's my kicker. So. Yeah, but would you have taken him 14th round? Yeah. Yeah, I probably would. Yeah, I'm not going to see you in the championship then. Yeah. Okay, so what do we – we got 16 picks. Okay. So we got three rounds to go. Mm, I really, I really got to plan this out carefully here. I really got to plan this out carefully. Care, uh, um, I don't think one of these guys I think should be. Let me take a look. Should be on y'all's high list here. Okay, no, I'm not worried about that. Uh, DeAndre Washington was taken off the board. Okay, yeah, my. Um, you know what? He, My he next took Marlon Mack away from me. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll take Robert some. Turman, Ooh. Kenyon Ooh, Drake. Worth. You yes. like Kenyon? You got you like no. Ken Kenyon Drake, don't you, Dan? No, not in fantasy this year. No, I mean I liked him coming into the draft a little bit. Antonio Gates. Best year, but wow. I don't. Uh, Bengals D. Mm -mm. Uh. 
I am on deck, I believe. Is that – am I looking at that accurately? No, it's uh, Matt. Laying the smack down is on the clock. Right, but I'm on deck, so I'm next. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Oh, I don't know how you do it on I, this phone. I don't even care anymore. You took my Marlin Mac. I am so upset. Yep, I'm about to take another one, too. Another one of my sleepers. I'm actually surprised this guy's still available because uh, he's got some skills. He's got some skills. He just. He's I know who you're going to take. I already know who you're going to take. What position? Tight end. No. Nope. Okay. No. It's going to be a receiver. Yeah, it is. Good old Mike Williams. Okay. When is he coming back? Week week fifteen. Oh, he'll come back in October. They they're targeting the first week of October for a return. But when he comes back, he's a number one, number two receiver, and I will enjoy that very much. Okay. I see. I've got a decision to make. Oh, John to Williams. Okay. So, new reads down besides, uh, what are some of these other rosters that you do like from some of the fans that have, have drafted already? Mm. Just okay. my own. I'm going really. to make the smart play here, guys. I'm going to make the smart play. I'm going to make the smart play. Okay. I'm going to make this play, then I'm going to call out the next pick, which I passed up over for this guy. Okay? And I don't care who grabs him next. I'm making the smart play. Julius Thomas, tight end of Miami. I like that pick. So the guy I passed up for that, hey, I just lost him. Uh, Ardarius, was it Ardarius Stewart? Yeah. Nope. Rookie. Mm-hmm. Second on the depth chart to the Jets. Someone has got to have fantasy production on the Jets, although I think they're going winless. Someone has got to have fantasy value. That's the guy I passed over for Julius Thomas. He's out there, but I'm not going to get around back to him. I, um, I've got to get down to business here. But our Darius Stewart is the guy I passed up. Not a bad pick. Not a bad pick. If Julius you Thomas? No, I, I like the Julius Thomas pick. I think he'll – Provide you more fantasy points than our Darius Stewart does. You, has he been going undrafted, Dan? Our Darius Stewart. Yeah. No, I, uh, actually, no. I mean, he got drafted in the ten man that I did, but it's also a keeper league, so the, the ability to keep it to the next year was pretty high with that pick. In a redraft league like Brandon loves so much, I could see potential of going undrafted. Not necessarily in ours because it's a fourteen man, but most ten to twelves he probably is. Okay, so who's on the clock currently in Team Copper Edge? So we're winding it down, guys. The My Fantasy Sports Talk Live Fantasy Draft. Another defense goes off the board. It's the Bills. We're at pick 196. And this is the guy, Dennis Durso. Dwayne Allen. Dwayne hey, Allen. What about Dwayne Allen, guys? Hello. <laughs> Dwayne Allen here. You forgot about me? Uh, man, how has his fantasy stock dropped from a year? Giants D goes off a nice pick with that Giants D. I think they're going to be good this year. And then Darren Coppich. If you screw me again, Darren. If you screw me again, Darren. All I gotta say, we're in the fifteenth round. This is the second pick. If you screw me again, Darren, don't do it. Let me take a look at Coppage's team right here. What is it? Team Coppage. Team Coppage. If you screw me again, no, he's not gonna screw me again. He's not gonna screw me again. This is an interesting pick, though. But he's not gonna screw me again. Who do you have in mind? Well, I can't say that yet. <laughs> Darren Coppage could screw me in. I don't think he is. He shouldn't. There would be crazy, but uh, I'll tell you real soon, Orlando. Uh, well, I ain't never heard of this dude. All right, Tariq Cohen. Uh, Man, tell uh, me about yeah. Tariq Cohen. Yeah, Human Joystick is his nickname. Uh, he played at NCA&T, uh, a smaller, smaller school. He's a rookie. 
he's looked very good in preseason, uh, and he, I wouldn't be surprised if he's their third down back uh, in Chicago. Um, they like him that much, and he's he's doing pretty well uh, with the the amount of reps that he's gotten. All right, so guys, I'm going defense. Who would you take with your defense if you're picking at this point in the draft based on who is left? Uh, Rams. Jags. So we got a Rams vote and a Jags vote. And the winner is? Titans. Orlando Torres. Uh, Hey, that was my way, way like last round pick, Dan, because I think they're going to be much improved and can sneak up on some folks. They were good at stopping the run last year. They just couldn't stop the pass. So we'll see what happens. So now we're in the kicker game. Oh, Kenny Stills was picked up. Okay. And then uh, Mason Crosby with pick 201. Colby took Marquise Lee. Not bad. Not bad. It's getting deep here. Jared Cook, tight end. Okay. And now it's Romo the dog, aka and Dan Shark's pick with two oh four in this. This is where my thing. This is where my thing on value comes in. I'm not. I wasn't looking at this position again. I already have two of them, uh, but it's just too good a value. It's the starter, and he's going to be getting a lot of touches, so or at least targets. So I'm gonna. <coughs> oh man, it won't even. Yeah, it will let me. There we go. What did I say nice. last week? Cameron Bray was he not in my top ten? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can't believe he. I can't believe OJ Howard went before him uh, this year. If you're talking 2017, Cameron Brate's the tight end to own in Tampa Bay, and I have three of them now. But I, I mean, I couldn't pass up that kind of value. The trade bait. I, I look. Yeah, definitely. I looked at him a couple of times because every time I see his name, I'm I pause for a second because I, I'm high on Cameron Brate. So maybe a daily fantasy player. I look to play a lot this year. I'm, I'm just high. I'm just high on that team this year, Dan. Yeah, me as well. Obviously, why Winston's my number one quarterback, Evans my number two receiver. I'm I like him a lot, and I have Deshaun Jackson on my team. Who stole Who stole Jameis from you again? Do you remember? No, that was early. Um, Casey Birch. Casey Birch did. You're fired, Casey. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> welcome back, and you're fired. <laughs> Just kidding. It goes like that. If I can meet Deering Coppage, I'd choke him, but it's okay. But, hey, we'll find out. If, if Spencer Ware does turn out to be what I think he's going to be, at least in the early part of the season, then you hurt me. But like, if it turns out to be like Dan says, then no no sweat at all. I got Matt Ryan out of the deal, which I think is the third-best fantasy quarterback. Maybe second. I think Drew Brees has no. eventually got to start playing like Drew Brees. Uh, you know, and Tom Brady, too. Eventually, those guys got to start playing like 40-year-olds. So we'll Ryan's see. on the clock. I think here you go. Alex Smith? Who took Alex Smith? Oh, uh, whoa. Nah. I would have rather drafted Patrick Mahomes than just watched him on my bench. Hold up. I'm about to pull up the list of quarterbacks still available. Someone just drafted Alex Smith, who is the least sexiest. I can't even pull it up because uh, I've already drafted my quarterbacks. Can someone else please? I can't either because I need to draft a kicker. Oh my! So you still got Sam Bradford. I think Sam Bradford's a, so, uh, Brian Hoyer. I will, the list of all, yeah. Uh, you got Jay Cutler up there. Oh, there goes Jay Cutler. Ryan Thomas just took Jay Cutler. Man, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Ryan I mean, Thomas he, is uh, embarrassing. The Thomas take name. He'll be decent, but you don't expect more than like twenty one, twenty two out of any week out of Jay Cutler. What kicker are you going after, Brandon? C.J. Fedorowitz. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't Tell matter. me. It, I, I, I have none. I haven't even looked at it yet. I don't care. Well, I hope my kicker's there. <laughs> Although my kicker is already taking Dan Bailey, but I have one in mind right now. I I mean, it's not going to be Robert Aguayo. I don't know if y'all have caught my um, my piece on Hard Knocks. It was the second episode of Hard Knocks, so I haven't caught up with the third episode, which was last night. But Robert Aguayo, check this out, guys. He went nearly damn perfect at Florida State and made all of his extra points, only missed like nine field goals in three years at Florida State, enters the NFL, misses his first ever extra point as a pro, has a horrible year, and eventually gets tossed from Tampa Bay, now is in Chicago and misses his first field goal attempt there badly. Oh, man, that was crazy. I don't know if y'all kept up or Florida State you know, fans have kept up with that, but wow, that is a crazy uh, fall. 
from from college to NFL bad. When you come out as college rated as the number one kickers and just God, it's got to be mental. Do you think that Dan, after missing your first extra point in the NFL, you think it was all downhill mentally? Find that wasn't he like a second rounder? Yeah, yeah they moved up in the second round to grab him. My God. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, the GM of the Bucks, I think it's licked, uh, even said uh, he, it has to be a mental thing. It's not physical. We know he has the physical tools to do it. He just hasn't been able to, and it's it's mental. And it's it's his approach is what he, he talked about. He didn't – Aguayo supposedly didn't approach the game, uh, you know, mentally the way he should have. All right, so Dylan on the clock again. Maybe a little shaky. Not too sure what he has in mind right here. Or yeah. since it's the last pick, he probably already left. No, I think he already has a kicker. So he doesn't need a kicker, I don't think. So we're winding this thing down. Um... Okay, the Rams defense. Okay, there you go. Pick 211, Rams defense. We're, uh, Will Lutz, kicker. No surprise to see a lot of kickers going to be coming off the board here. So that's it. My draft is complete. Let's see what everybody else does. We'll see what happens. I've got several picks before my pick. Uh, let's see. we got Dan coming up. Mm -hmm. You need a kicker too, Dan? I do indeed. I'm going to go with, uh, well, the guy I want was a former first-round pick. A kicker? Yep. Hmm. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I know it's sad to admit, but I don't know which one of these guys would have been a former first-rounder. Unless it was Sebastian Janikowski, because that was like 25 years ago. And Why? I don't remember. Yes, that's actually who it was. Al Davis traded up in the first round to select Sebastian Janikowski. I remember that now that you confirmed it, but I did not at the time. But, well, we'll you know, see I've, got him, I've got him selected as mine, too. So you're going to get him before me, so I'm, let me switch off him. because no sense in that, huh? Uh, well, unless he's gone. I mean, he could be uh, three picks, three, four picks before me. And honestly, I don't uh, – I haven't kept up with the kicker game much. I don't like a lot of my choices. Well, who's, who's the guy you had in mind? I know they're just kickers, but Janikowski is the guy I'm gonna I'm going for. So, oh, somebody just drafted Kaepernick. What? Now that was just purely making a stance right there. We got to back up and find out who that was. Um, Brashard Perryman, which is not bad. He might have should have gone before last round. I don't know. We'll see. Stay healthy. That's his problem. Mm -hmm. But I like I like I like that. I like that. Cairo Santos. And now we're at pick 216, sixth pick of the 16th and final round. One pick, and this is Matt Aguirre. Uh, so check out the People's Podcast. It's Matt Aguirre. And then Romo the dog, a.k.a. Dan Short. Come on now. Harrison Butler. Dan gets his Sebastian Janikowski. So, I don't know, man. He's got a boot attached to him, so you can't go wrong there. But now, I mean, some of these some of these kickers that are left for you, it's slim pickings. You can always go with the Buffalo pick kicker, Steven Hauschka. Did you see what Blair Walsh was doing to Minnesota the other night in the preseason game? I did not. After being released by Minnesota, well, after missing the field goal kick to knock them out of the playoffs and Seattle moves on, gets signed by Seattle, playing for Seattle, knocked down a couple of big field goals against Minnesota in the preseason and was staring down that bench big time. <laughs> um, but that's just not the guy I'm going to go with. You know what? At this point, I really don't care, but I got a theory here. I got a, I got kind of a strategy here. Always go with the kicker who kicks in the thin air of Denver Mile High, and that's going to be Brandon McManus. So that's my last pick of this draft, kicker. I've had him in previous uh, previous leagues. He always 
Always does good with those 50 yarders, which are in our league, are extra points. And he was ranked fairly far down there in kickers. If you look at the kickers list right now, he was probably like 8, 9, 10 of what's left. So that's a little surprising, but I don't care. I really don't care. Whatever. And You didn't get Spencer Ware, so your whole team is ruined. I, I wanted Spencer Ware. I ain't going to lie. I wanted Spencer Ware. So Dennis Durso finishes it out. He had the number one pick. He gets the last pick. Show me your TDs. <laughs> <laughs> Wendell Smallwood was the last pick after my Brandon McManus. We're waiting on uh, Dennis's pick. Who's it going to be? Does Dennis need a? Uh, does Dennis need a kicker too? He does. Okay. So we know it's going to probably going to be a kicker there. So. Oh, man. What I would like to do to wrap this up, we'll we'll let you know who Dennis selects, but um, before we go, just kind of thoughts and impressions. Uh, Each one of you guys pull up your team. Um, Dan and Orlando will go through them and uh, and just kind of uh, tell you you, – uh, let everyone know how you feel about your team. I know I've asked both of you guys. It didn't really go the way you thought it would, but we'll see uh, what happens as the season progresses. So uh, that's it. We're waiting on Dennis. Uh, 15 seconds, but he'll probably pick a kicker there. Insignificant 16th round pick. So, guys, I ended up, and I'm going to go, let, let's pull up and do the raw, uh, roster by selection, guys, so we can tell our first round uh, through 16th round pick. So first round, I went with Mike Evans, the uh, – uh, stud wide receiver. Nick Novak was the final kicker in the draft, guys, just so you know. Uh, uh, Mike Evans was my first pick three overall. Isaiah Crowell, was, uh, running back Cleveland, uh, was my second pick in round two. Alshon Jeffrey, wide receiver, got some boos and awes about that, round three. Greg Olson went with a tight end. That's totally outside the norm for me, guys. Uh, tight end with the fourth pick. Uh, and then Matt Ryan, fifth round, my quarterback. Robert Kelly, running back, sixth round. Terrence West, running back, seventh round. Thomas Rawls, running back, eighth round. Uh, Ted Ginn, wide receiver, ninth round. Sterling Shepard, wide receiver, tenth round. Jeremy Hill, running back, eleventh round. Alan Hearns, wide receiver, eleventh round. Uh, Tim Hightower, running back, thirteenth round. Tight end, Julius Thomas, which I thought slipped a little far, 14th round. Think you'll have better production than the 14th round pick in this year's draft this year. 15th round, I ended up with the Jaguars defense. And then 16th, my kicker, Brandon McManus. Dan, what's your team look like? Uh, My team, I went with my number one overall wide receiver in the first round, Michael Thomas. Followed that up with Todd Gurley in the second round. Devontae Adams in the third round. Joe Mixon, uh, rookie running back, fourth round. Kareem Hunt, another rookie running back, fifth round. You're going to notice a trend here. Uh, Deshaun Jackson in the sixth round. Uh, Marcus Mariota, I picked my quarterback up a little bit earlier than I wanted in the seventh round. Hunter Henry, my starting tight end uh, in the eighth round. Jamal Williams, another rookie running back in the ninth round. Uh, Minnesota defense picked up him, picked him up in the tenth. Evan Ingram, another tight end. Um, I don't even know what that was. The eleventh round. Cole Beasley, who's going to be a PPR monster in the twelfth. Nice. Uh, Orlando's guy, Marlon Mack, in the thirteenth. Uh, Mike Williams, who is out right now, but he's going to come back in October and steal the show. Got him in the what was that fourteenth round. Cameron Brait, don't know why he was still out there, available in the 15th round, but I got him as a third tight end and ended it with Janikowski. Orlando, what's your team look like? All right, so 13th pick, I went ahead and went with Jordan Howard, came back around, took Brandon Cooks. Third round, took uh, Crabtree, still got the high volume there. Fourth round, uh, it was a, still a few about it, but went ahead and took Ty Montgomery. I know Dan took another guy that's right behind him, so let's see how that plays out. Fifth round, went ahead and took Stefan Diggs, which I like a lot. Uh, sixth round, took Doug Martin. Seventh round, came around, took Tyler Eifert. Eighth round, came, took Dak Prescott. Took Tyrell Williams in the ninth. Uh, CJ Prosize in the tenth. Chiefs went for defense a little early in the, in the 11th round with the Chiefs. Uh, took, a, took a second quarterback in Andy Dalton in the 12th. Devin Funches in the 13th 
Robert Turbin since Marlon Mack was gone in the 14th. C.J. Fedorowicz in the 15th and then ended up with Will Lutz in the 16th. You're the one who took C.J. Fedorowicz. I was wondering who did that. I was targeting Cameron Ray too. That's why I had mentioned earlier to Dan is at a tight end because I saw, I saw Cameron Ray just slipping too. So he was the guy that I was aiming for, but Fedorowicz was, was still there, so that's a guy I also like a lot right behind Cameron Braid. Okay, so now let's kind of go around um, the merry-go-round and, and tell the folks at home how we feel about our team. So this is what I really want to uh, – what I want to do next week, especially since we got fan interaction now this, this year too. So – Next week on the podcast, I want to kind of break down our fantasy teams. We'll still go heavy, heavy, heavy fantasy uh, football. Although we do have the uh, Connor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight to talk about. We'll get into that too next week for sure and see what happened there. But we'll still go heavy fantasy football and talk about the MFST fantasy baseball playoffs for sure. But next week, I do want to break down our teams. We'll have a little bit more uh, time to kind of break down everyone's team and maybe rank them as well and, and tell you what those rankings may be and how we feel more about our team as we have a, a week to let it soak in and think about it. So we'll do that next week. But uh, right now, I, I pretty much knew that I was going to go with Mike Evans on that third pick, guys. I knew, unless we were talking about earlier, one of the fans would screw up excuse me, the first two picks and not pick either David Johnson or Le'Veon Bell. Um, if they wouldn't have done one of those two, then that's who my third pick would have been. So, but that third pick, I was going to target Mike Evans pretty much. I had it made up in my mind all along. The second close guy was probably Julio Jones, but his health concerns me a little bit. Um, I'm a little weak at running back. I understand that. Isaiah Crowell is a starter, though. I do like that. So I have uh, – I, I do like that pickup as far as uh, running back because I think he'll probably be the starter for at least several, several weeks. We'll see about the production. Uh, Robert Kelly should be the number one guy in Washington right now. We'll see about that. Um, but uh, Alshon Jeffrey, I'm not as down on Alshon Jeffrey as Dan is. I like Alshon Jeffrey. He's the number one guy in Philadelphia with a guy who can sling it. I like that. Um, Greg Olson, no complaints there. Panthers should have a bounce back year this year. Cam Newton should have a pretty good fantasy year. Panthers should have a bounce back year this year. Uh, Terrence West is a backup. Uh, Thomas Rawls uh, should be the number one guy to start out, at least anyway. Ted Ginn should be the number two guy on New Orleans, which you never know with New Orleans. That's a problem. Drew Brees is going to sp spread it around. So, look, Ted Ginn will have big days. I just don't know when they're going to be. Um, and Jeremy Hill, kind of same with him. Alan Hearns, I don't know what's going to ha happen with Jacksonville uh, in the quarterback situation. Tim Hightower could take over that job eventually. I don't know, but I think they're going to at least try to give him work to see what he can do in a very stagnant, poor San Francisco team. Uh, Julius Thomas may be the steal for me, guys. I think he's going to have big production in the tight end position with Jay Cutler now. Uh, for the Miami Dolphins. And then, of course, uh, Matt Ryan's my quarterback, man. Matt Ryan is my stud. Um, he, he should be okay. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, Matt Ryan and Mike Evans are going to put up a big chunk of my numbers, I hope, every single week. So uh, I like my team. Not really the makeup that I thought it would be at the end, but uh, I, I do like my team, and we'll see what happens. Damn. Uh, yeah, I mean, just the overall makeup. I got my number one wide receiver, so I'm happy with that. Um, I went with a lot of rookies, and I've done this in basically every draft I've done this year. Um, studying the draft, I knew this was the deepest running back draft coming into the NFL. Uh, basically, in my lifetime, I've never really seen backs this deep. So I grabbed a lot of them when you look at Joe Mixon, Kareem Hunt, uh, Jamal Williams, Marlon Mack, yeah, all rookie running backs. Um that I have. So I'm, I'm excited for it. I mean, you're, you're a little bit nervous about drafting that many rookies. And I even went more rookies beyond that drafting Evan Ingram and Mike Williams uh, to, to round out some even more, more rookies on my team, but they're talented. And I think uh, by mid season, I'm going to be hitting my stride. I'm going to be having people like a Marlon Mack on my bench become running back ones in fantasy. I think he can be that good and that dominant uh, as basically the, the main back in Indianapolis. So uh, I like some of my teams. It might take a couple weeks to progress, uh, but with Marcus Mariota at uh, at quarterback, 
uh, in my, you know, my receivers, like I said, Michael Thomas and Devontae Adams paired with Sean Jackson. I think I have some overall uh, solid depth, so I like my team a lot. And I have three tight ends, so if any of you guys ever need one, offer me a trade. Someone's going to be offering you a trade for Evan Ingram. Uh, probably probably by week three for sure. So, And then Cameron Braid as well. I like that pick a lot. Uh, um Orlando, how do you feel about your team? Break it down for us. Uh, so, yeah, uh, obviously there were some picks that I wish would have fallen to me. But uh, overall, I think it went pretty good. I went ahead and grabbed Jordan Howard. I think at that spot, I didn't. Michael Thomas was gone. There were some wide receivers gone already, a uh, majority of them. So I went ahead and quickly grabbed Jordan Howard. I came back and grabbed Brandon Cooks. I was actually uh, contemplating of taking another running back. Oh, but um, I went ahead and went with Cooks. And I do like Cooks. Like, besides Gronkowski, I don't see how – just in my opinion, Edelman beats out Cooks. I just need the speed there. And for what they gave up for a guy like Cooks, I think he's going to play a huge factor in New England. I do know um, there's going to be some weeks where, you know, he kind of gives you some duds. But those big weeks, is uh, you know, I'll go ahead and uh, live and die by those big weeks that he's going to give me. Crabtree as well. Um, you know, we keep on waiting for Mari Cooper time. Maybe this is a year, but – Crabtree just year in and year out just keeps proving that, you know, he's been the guy over there in Oakland. Eifert, I love definitely number one wide receiver when healthy, and obviously that is the key. That's why we went ahead and took C.J. Fedorowicz. But there's no questioning the, uh, the talent of Tyler Eifert and, you know, the, the touchdowns he has, and he's a big target that Andy Dalton's always looking for. Um, now, Doug Martin, I, I, I do like the Ty Montgomery pick if it does pan out, but uh, Doug Martin, I truly think, you know, three-game suspension. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have to wait that out, but I do think, you know, this guy from what he's been through, um, I hope he bounces back. And I, I do think he can return and kind of be number one. And if he turns out to be number one after the three-game suspension, I mean, that was, you know, pretty good reach, I think, if he turns out the way I hope he does. Um, Robert Turbin. Uh, I was really hoping for Marlon Mack. But for guys, you know, the goal line back and currently behind Frank Gore, I'll go ahead and take a roll of the dice with that because of just how – the, the running back position is so scarce. And uh, my, my quarterbacks, I went ahead and took Dak Prescott. I mean, a little bit of a homer pick, but then I went ahead and teamed him up with Andy Dalton. So just you guys are pretty high on Andy Dalton himself and especially so with his weapons. That's what I want to talk to you about next, Orlando, because uh, the question's burning in my mind here. So what is your plan now? Or have you even had a chance to think about that? Because you got Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton, uh, you know, several guys that we compare, a couple of guys that we've compared over the last several podcasts. Do you think right now you'd even mix them up? Is there a solid number one guy you're starting every single week, no matter what? Are you thinking that you may be mixing Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton up every week, depending on matchup? Yeah, I'm definitely mixing them up. I mean, you look at some of uh, the Cowboys' early matchups. I think they got Denver and uh, Arizona, and I think that Denver game is on the road. So that may be a game I'm definitely – probably looking to mix up uh, Andy Dalton there in the starting lineup. So, yeah, I definitely plan on ro uh, rotating these guys, especially because I know what I got with Andy Dalton. And I think in a 14-man league, um, it's wise to take a second quarterback just because of situations like this. And you, you go look at the quarterbacks that are left over, it's not that exciting. So, uh, Dak Prescott and Andy Dalton, I do plan on flip-flopping. Uh, I do like Dak Prescott. I don't think he's going to be a complete uh, uh, slump. I do think, think he regresses a bit, but uh, uh, for you know the for where I got him, I like it. And then it's, I'm thrilled that I got a, a possible top ten quarterback with Andy Dawson too, like another four rounds later. So I'm I'm thrilled with that. I'm completely happy with my quarterbacks that I got. And I'll just say Orlando had probably you know, several guys on my top thirty big draft board. We'll start out. Um, Tyler Eifert. I was definitely considering Tyler Eifert as a tight end if it fell if it fell beyond that, you know, round wise, where I couldn't you know grab one of those top 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 elite guys. But Tyler Eifert was definitely on my big board. Doug Martin was on my board. No, Dan's not high on him. I like Doug Martin regardless of the suspension when he comes back. I think he's going to pl play a big role. Um, Andy Dalton, of course, bam. Uh, like it a lot. And then Devin Funches is a guy which is ranked number two on the Panthers' uh, depth chart. I like that Devin Funches pick. Uh, so I like it. Uh, so, but that's going to wrap up this week's My Fantasy Podcast. So much to absorb. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to think about my team right now. It's going to take a week or so to absorb it and uh, think about it and let it all uh, kind of sink in and what I might need to do. Maybe we'll make some trades between now and then. Who knows? But we'll break it all down next week on my fantasy podcast. So, 
uh, thanks for joining us. I hope that was entertaining. I hope that was knowledgeable for you. We talked a lot of mess. We talked a lot of big game leading up to it. We released a lot of articles on myfantasysportstalk.com, and it all led to that. So you can let it all play out. I think we announced every single pick on the podcast, so you can check that out and uh, and see where we ranked and where we ranked them. And in case you haven't drafted yet, hope it helps you. But all that, we'll do it bigger and better next week. Dan, uh, what else is going on on the website right now? Let's not forget about the other stuff. A lot of other stuff going on on MyFantasySportsTalk.com besides just fantasy football, I guess. Yeah, obviously Orlando covered the big MMA news with John Jones uh, testing positive for, for steroids. We have that. Kyrie Irving is now a Celtic. Uh, that's been uh, it's pretty crazy. The entertainment section, as usual, is, is blowing up, doing well, so... Um, definitely check out the site. A lot of great stuff. We're going to continue the fantasy football coverage all season long, uh, NFL, college football. So uh, definitely check out the site daily for all of our uh, all of our articles, works, podcasts uh, every single day and every week. So um, really exciting time. Football season is is the time to visit the site. Our busiest time of of the year. And you think you'll meet me in the championship again this year? Uh, somebody's going to face me. I don't know who it's going to be. And probably Darren Coppage. I'm, I'm, uh, it's going to be me and Darren Coppage facing off, so it, it'll be a good battle. Whoa, whoa, oh, okay. See, look at that new Regis and the is off like that. I know I came in pretty at the end of the barrel last year, but uh, I'm telling you. All right, I like that. Yeah, you ride like Robert that. Turbin right to that championship. The underdog. It ain't going to be Ryan Thomas, Mr. Thomas yeah. Tech. Yeah. I don't know what you did. Hey, did you study? Have you been listening? <laughs> you should have been. Uh, I don't I don't know about that, but that's what next week is for, to break it all down. MyFantasySportsTalk.com Fantasy Draft next week on the podcast, My Fantasy Podcast. Thanks for joining us, checking us out live on YouTube. Check out the replays on YouTube. Check us out on WBLZ Sports. We'll run this on WBLZ Sports this week. Uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, everything. Uh, the website, MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Check us out uh, every single week for the podcast. And let us know what you thought about the draft. And every one of our fans who was in this draft, um, Coppage and, and everyone, uh, Den- De- Dennis who? Who was it? Dennis what? Dennis Durso. Dennis Durso. All of you guys, you let us know what you thought about the draft next week with our mailbag questions, and we'll address those as well. But until then, we've done enough. This is it. The fantasy draft is over. Now it's time for the road for the championship. Join us next week on My Fantasy Podcast for Orlando Torres and Dan Shaw. I am Brandon Reed. Next week, podcast peeps. Later. Peace.